So my kiln is a pretty straightforward setup. It really is just a giant box that I started with 20 foot long two by fours that I had from a, that made up a pallet to hold metal roofing sheets. So I reused all of those boards to kind of span the top. And then um, what I've done is I, I and span the bottom. What I've done is just kind of make a loose frame to uh, hold the reflective heat um, insulation layer. So that's all around the inside. And here's like the inside of one of the doors. So really what happened was I had so much of this foam board left over from a project that I decided to just uh, reuse it because it was all just sitting in a pile. And I thought, well, why not just stack it all in a box? So you can see all my extra foam I stack on top here. So it, this is a very, very energy efficient kiln. And I'll show you, um, it's pretty, pretty basic. There are moisture meters and there's a moisture meter and a temperature meter mounted up here at the top. And yeah, the, I had some old picket fence that I used to just lay all the wood on top of. Um, I still, I'll still put the stickers on top of it just because this is kind of like a treated wood and I don't really want to dirty up my boards that are drying, but it keeps the bottom heat layer um, or heat reflective um, insulation from getting damaged every time I load and unload it. So inside the kiln, all I really have is a small little um, dehumidifier and a just a tiny little personal heater that is only 500 watts. Um, it uses very little energy and I actually don't use this thing unless I am doing my final sanitization of the wood. So I'll get it heated up to about 140, 150 degrees in here and leave it there for anywhere from four to eight hours, depending upon how much wood's in here, just to kill all bugs or anything else that might be in it. And then lastly, there's just a fan. So this fan runs on low um, while the dehumidifier is running. So it just keeps air circulating around the kiln and I can take little baffles um, and redirect wind through um, through the stack. I can set them on each side. They're just little, I'm trying to find one right now. I think I've got one up here. But yeah, they just have these little baffles right here that are um, shelf boards. They came from like old shelving. So I just set them in here, kind of like, kind of like so on the back side. And what they do is they act to knock the, the wind that's blowing around in here inside the stack. So the whole stack can get um, air dried. Over here, um, I have the dehumidifier just drains out into a little catch basin. And so I kind of monitor how much water's coming out of here um, to just see how far along the wood is. And then um, as far as the other electronics, I just have this uh, system here that is connected to the um, thermometer and the moisture sensor. So you can set the outlets to work off of the temperature and humidity levels inside. So you can have the fan turn on or off or have things shut down if it gets too hot or whatever, however you want to set it up. Um, but I just use this because I'm able to monitor um, the humidity change inside the chamber here. That's the most important thing and the temperature. Uh, and lastly, what I did was I just threw a big sheet of plastic that I got at the hardware store. It goes all the way over on all sides and it, and it traps the moisture inside. Um, and that way uh, it keeps moisture inside to go through the dehumidifier and then drain out. So that's the, uh, that's all I have set up here. And just made use of a lot of extra materials that I had, like this Tyvek wrap. I built 
everything up on bunks so I can move this whole thing around with a um, pallet jack. So if I ever decide I don't want it here, I can move it anywhere else. And then yeah, my whole my whole setup here is inside of a spray foamed workshop garage. So so yeah, it's pretty pretty efficient, pretty effective. And like I said, just with the dehumidifier running and the fan running, no heater, it will stay a steady uh, 110 degrees roughly inside the chamber um, without having to run any heaters. So it's pretty awesome. So I have the buckthorn loaded into the kiln. It's uh, these pieces down here. I put it on the bottom of the stack. I had a bunch of other silver maple that has been air dried for a few months. So I just piled everything up high on top of it. Over here, we also have some Osage orange, which I milled a while back. I'm gonna put some concrete bags on top of everything here to weigh it all down. But I'll tell you, the Osage orange um, that I've milled and air dried for about, oh, I don't know, nine months now or something, has not dried uh, straight, so it's pretty crooked and stuff. So I don't really, I'm not really worried too much about this area over here. Um, I'm just gonna throw some bags on top of it because this wood's really all crooked all, already. So I'm just gonna try to hold it down as best I can and see if I can salvage anything from it. But yes, the main stuff is gonna be over here in this stack. And I think I got everything pretty, pretty straight. When this is all loaded up here, I just stack some concrete bags on the top and just depending upon how straight the wood is or how much I think it's gonna move, I add more. So yeah, it works well. I have a whole bunch of concrete over here that I've have left over each bag weighs 60 pounds so you can get a lot of weight on there quick so yeah so I'm just gonna um, I have this one this buckthorn here piece right in on top just to one add a little weight but I'm not gonna weigh it down just to see how it dries um, without any weight on it I have a feeling it's gonna move around a lot all right so I'm gonna get the doors on here and show you a little bit uh, how that works these doors, there's no hinges or anything. They're just big flat panels that have wrap on both sides. I took some scrap and screwed it through just to sort of hold everything together. Um, and there's some boards running on the inside here too that just kind of sandwich everything up so that it doesn't fall apart. And all it does is it rests in here on the top layer of the foam down here. So it just pushes in. It's not bolted at the bottom or anything, but you set it on the bottom there. And then uh, when you tilt it forward, these bolts come through these holes here and you just kind of push the thing together and finger tighten it down. There's two bolts on each door. So I'll just tighten this thing way down. and just kind of push it all together it doesn't have to be perfect it helps to have a little bit i mean i've got the the plastic over the whole thing so it sort of seals the air um, and moisture all in here so um yeah it, it's pretty airtight and pretty pretty energy efficient so that's what it looks like with one door on and i've got the other door back here so i'm just going to pick this thing up and put it on the kiln here and then be ready to turn it on and go so before i shut everything up i make sure i turn on the switch on the side and make sure everything's running fine and the fans clear uh get it nice and stable so it doesn't tip over or anything uh, my heater's off i'm not going to have that running we're just going to do the dehumidifier and the fan and that heat should be enough for a while and then after a couple weeks uh, maybe a week or two I don't know just kind of see how the moisture does with these boards here they're pretty dry so I don't we may not need to go too long the biggest thing is that 
three inch thick buckthorn down there that's still pretty pretty wet so that one I might just leave everything in for a while just to let it dry out but I'll go slow that way nothing but gets too uh, warped or cracked or split or anything like that so the door is on or both doors are on I should say and all we have to do is put all this plastic down so really I have like a piece of foam up here sort of adding some weight so it's pretty straightforward you just pull it down and I do, I will throw a couple of like scrap pieces of wood onto the bottom just to hold the plastic down. And come over here, this side, there it is. We've got our kiln. And if you're like me, you might have extra foam boards and things that you have laying around from past projects. And what I've, I've always just kept them in a pile, but now the storage of these scrap pieces of foam act like extra insulation for the kiln. So they just make it more efficient. And I still have a place to store everything. So um, yeah, I'm real happy with the setup. It was very cheap to build and it's very cheap to operate. So right now it is 41.4 degrees inside the kiln. And this is uh, just right after I closed it, so it tells you kind of how cold it is in the workshop here. Um, or at least this part of the workshop. And our catch basin has zero water in it. I'm going to come back and check on this every few days. And I will show sort of how the temperature changes. <clears throat> I haven't dried wood with this thing in the winter yet, so I'm gonna just curious to see how high it gets up to temperature-wise. But in the summertime, it has no trouble getting to 110 degrees while it's usually about uh, in the 60s inside the workshop here. All right, so it is now 69.2 degrees in the kiln and it's 44.6 relative humidity after two days of just the dehumidifier running, no heater or anything. And we are now starting to get some water trickling out. 